In 1987, Mr. Jerry Levine got involved in Chabad's Aleph Institute, which serves the religious needs of Jewish servicemen as well as Jews in the American correctional system. At the time, he was working as an anchorman for Miami's Channel 10 News. The rabbi at the time uh, and another person who was the president of Aleph, Mark Sheridan, Shalom Moshe Sheridan, had asked me if I would consider leaving television and, and working with this organization that helped Jewish prisoners around the world. And I thought this was really an interesting kind of an opportunity. I mean, how often are you going to get an opportunity to do that? I thought I could always go back into the, into the news business or back into television, but it, it would be very unusual to do something like this. And uh, I sort of was intrigued by the idea. And the, the rabbi had asked me to write a letter to the Rebbe. So I did. And I wrote this long letter to the Rebbe, and he said to me, explain, you know, explain exactly what you're doing, what you hope to accomplish, all these different things. So I wrote this long letter telling the Rebbe, you know, I'm anchoring in Miami, and I'm doing this. I come from this background. I did this. I'm doing that. Um, and I have this offer, and so on and so forth. And I remember getting a call. The, Reb, the, the letter went off, and then I remember getting a phone call from Rabbi Lipsker, uh, in the newsroom, and uh, I pick up the phone, and he goes, I got an answer from the Rebbe. He goes, you got to come right away. So I go over to my assignment editor. I said, look, I have an emergency. I have to leave. I, I, I got to get out of here. And I did, and he let me, and I took off, and I came to his office. And I remember Rabbi Lipsker was uh, in his office at his desk, and when I walked in, he was just studying this little piece of paper. And... Um, he, you know, it was interesting. There was this shaft of light coming through the blinds. I remember it was like a whole scene, you know, with him with the black hat and, you know, in this little office. And he's looking at this little uh, piece of paper. It actually was a big piece of paper, but there was only a small little paper that had, on the facts, had come through. And the rabbi says, sit down, Yasef. And he said, you know, I'm very puzzled by this answer. Because I had asked him, you know, what does it say? What does it say? And he goes, I can't figure it out. He goes, I've been thinking about it for a long time. So he says, I'll tell you what it says. It says, tell me all your names. This was the answer. So I'm sitting there. I'm thinking, okay, I write a letter to this great Jewish leader. You know, I'm an anchor man. I could probably help Chabad in some way. I'm going to get some kind of intellectual answer or some interesting answer. This answer was interesting, but it was totally out of the box. Tell me all your names. And he looks at me and I look at him. I go, tell me all your names. What does tell me all your mains, names mean? And he goes, the only thing I can think of, the rabbi says, is that it means that the Rebbe somehow doesn't recognize your soul or something. So I'm like, okay. Uh, what does that mean? And this actually had, I think, now that I'm thinking about it, preceded my trip to 770. And now that I'm thinking about the order of things, because I didn't tell the story completely in a chronological way. But in any case, um, the rabbi said, are you sure you know your Jewish name? And I'm like, am I sure I know my Jewish name? Yeah, I'm positive I know my Jewish name. And I had signed my Jewish name. Um, on the letter, I signed my English name, signed my, my, my Hebrew name. And, uh, you know, he said, well, are you sure? And I said, yeah, I'm positive. My name is Yasef. You know, I know my father's name is Tzvi Hershleib Halevi, and that's my name. He goes, look, he goes, I'm sure you're right. He goes, but maybe you should ask your mother anyway. I said, okay, I'll ask my mother. You know, I was like, this is a silly in a way. So I go to my mother. I go right from his office to my mom. Knock on the door. My mom opens the door. I, mom, I got an answer from the Rebbe. Oh, what did he say? My mom, of course, loved Chabad. She was very, had a very different sense of it than my father did at first. And uh, she loved the rabbi. My dad liked the rabbi too a lot but he was a little more suspicious. But in any case, my mom was like, okay, well, what does it say? 
I said, Mom, it's really an odd answer. He, his answer is, tell me all your names. So my mother just was perplexed, and, and I said, I know, it doesn't make any sense, but I know my Jewish name. My name is Yasef, and my mother looks at me, and she goes, yeah, Yasef Mordechai. I said, what? She goes, your name, your, your name is Yosef Mordechai. I said, Mordechai? I said, you never told me that. So right then I was uh, sort of shocked. And uh, another interesting thing was I always liked the name Mordechai. <laughs> I'd always really liked it. I always thought he was one of the, these great figures from learning about Jewish history. And I always lo really liked the name. Uh, but of course, there was a lot of other implications. And it took many years, I think, for me to kind of figure out what it all meant for me. But in any case, uh, now I realize my name was Yosef Mordechai Ben Svi Hirschleib Halevi. And then uh, the rabbi said, now we can write another letter to the Rebbe and you'll sign it with your full name. And this time maybe you'll get an answer. And I did get an answer. And the answer that came back that time was ask your best friend what that person thinks. And I asked my mother who uh, I had felt was my best friend and my mom, you know, and I talked about that, and eventually I, I did, you know, start working with uh, the Olive Institute. But um, years later, what I got from that was, I think any other Jewish leader I would have written a letter to would have been thinking, what is the marketing potential for our organization? How could he help us with video news releases or press coverage or in what manner can this person uh, help our organization grow? And the Rebbe wasn't thinking about any of that. The Rebbe was thinking, well, here's a Jewish boy that doesn't know his name. So I, I felt like the Rebbe was in a completely different category and was a totally different kind of leader. You know, one that uh, somehow, as far away as I was from him, and, ha and how we were only communicating by fax machine, was still able to sort of, you know, reach through the ether and, like, touch you on a very, very profound level.